You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Well, hello, Homeworthy. I'm Dorinda, and welcome to Bluestone Manor. I can't wait to show you around. Come on in. Hi, my name's Dorinda Medley, and of course you know me from The Real Housewives of New York City, The Ultimate Girls Trip, Making It Nice, and we are today at Bluestone Manor. We all know Bluestone Manor from Bravo, but I call Bluestone Manor the Disney of Bravo. I mean, it's become famous, it's become infamous, it's really iconic, I think. And I think of it as home, obviously. I think it's kind of a living, breathing, wonderful place where I am able to create, kind of be myself, entertain, and you know, always make it nice. You know, that's what you know me for. I make it nice, right? And for me, Bluestone Manor has a very special, special place because it was built in 1902 by Stanford White. And my great grandfather, who was an Italian Mason, came over from Italy to work with a team to help build the house. And then my grandfather, um, who also was a Mason, worked on the house. And when I was growing up, I used to come to this house and just look up and think, oh my God, I would love to own this house. And it wasn't called anything at the time. And I used to say to my dad, one day I'm gonna grow up and you and mommy are gonna live here and I'm never gonna leave you. And so that kind of was my fantasy as a young girl um, growing up in Great Barrington. And then about six months before I married my late husband, Richard Medley, he bought it for me as a wedding gift because he knew that it meant so much to me. He knew that the Berkshires meant so much to me. and. Um, you know what, Richard's not here, but the house lives on. When Richard surprised me and brought me to what is now Bluestone Manor, there actually wasn't a gate like there is now. And he just started driving up the driveway. I was like, oh my God, we're coming to the house I love in the Berkshires. We were obviously engaged. And he started driving up the driveway and I'm thinking, what are you doing? I mean, we can't drive. He's like, sure you can, it's your house. And I said, what do you mean it's my house? He's like, well, you always love the house. It's part of your childhood. You love the Berkshires. I want you to be close to your family. I want our family to be close to the Berkshires. I remember thinking about it as such a beautiful moment because I always, when I think about love and I think about commitment and I think about building a family, I think the biggest part of it is when people do kind things for you, things that make you feel safe, things that bring you together, and things that show you that you have a future together. So for me, it was, is, and will always be a very special place for me. And that's why we have a beautiful old hundred year old tree in the back that is a tribute to Richard that every year on his birthday we go and place some more flowers on and decorate it a little bit more. So Richard's here, okay? He may not be here physically, but believe me, he's wandering around somewhere here, hopefully saying I'm doing a good job. I'm making it nice, right? Well, here you are at Bluestone Manor on a beautiful fall day, and we are starting in the entryway where I greet everyone as they come to visit me. I love this entryway because of the fantastic original fireplace. Isn't this thing incredible? You could actually walk into it. It's actually no longer a real fireplace because it became such a burden to put wood into. It's actually propane now, but welcome. My friend Greg Calejo gave me this sign, and it fits in perfectly, it's quite, it says J'adore. So Greg and I sort of camped out together during COVID up at Bluestone Manor, and then he gave me this as a gift afterwards, which I cherish, and it kind of goes, right? That's what I love, if you decorate, don't worry about everything matching so much, don't worry that it's perfect, just worry that you love it. Then, and also, put stuff in your house that says something about you. So when I come down in the morning and I see this on, I think of Greg, and I think I adore you back. So you, so you look at this very modern, very modern light art, and then you look at these beautiful statues that we bought at Sotheby's. They were part of an estate sale, and they're so traditional, right? But okay, it works, or does it, or who cares? I love fresh flowers. I think it is one of these things that takes a lot of effort, I know, but it makes such a big difference. I always have fresh flowers here, and I always have fresh flowers in the city. It is a luxury that we should all afford ourselves. But let's, uh, let's go into the billiard room, one of my favorite rooms. Come on in. 
Well, the beautiful and colorful billiard room. This room is mainly a room that we frequent at night. It's especially good on a very cozy, cold winter night. This fireplace is actually a real fireplace because I thought you need to have the crackling wood in the smell of firewood late at night, especially if you're drinking a little blue stone and a bourbon, right? And telling all your secrets. I love it here because it just feels so homey and warm. And of course, we are great collectors of books. Richard and Hannah single-handedly put this whole library together. They know every book in this library. And if I tell you, if I remove a book, Hannah knows it like this. And I don't know if you know this, but we always have some sort of Christmas tree set up at Blue Star Manor every season. This one is sort of become a permanent installation because I love it because it represents all the colors of the room. If you look at the ceiling, you can see that every color in the ceiling has seeped down into this beautiful, beautiful Christmas tree. I sit here at five, six in the morning quietly with the little lights on and it just makes me feel so cozy and home. So we love this room. But I know you guys don't know this room as well as you know the famous blue room. That's where the peacock lives. Come on in. Yay. And here she is. Oh, let's see if the peacock's still here. There she is, keeping watch, jewels on and everything. The peacock was given to me by the famous Douglas Little, who I love. He brought this as a gift from me. It was at Barney's and I saw it and here she is constantly on the lookout, making sure all is well. And if you look at the colors in the peacock, they pretty much evoke the colors of the room. Um, we also have this famous painting by Jennifer Hefferman. So many people have put their faces on this painting and done memes. So she is famous. She's almost as famous as I am, if not more famous. And this is always a good photo moment. Look, it makes me feel very lady of the manor, right? holding a glass of bourbon, maybe just lounging. Very early 20th century, don't you think? The enthusiasm of buying the house kind of led into, oh my God, what have we done? Because obviously I knew the house from the outside. I knew the history of the house. I knew that my grandparents and great grandparents had sort of worked on it and had known the house. And it was sort of a famous house in Great Barrington. Um, they called it one of the Berkshire cottages. But the reality of the house was that no one really sort of took an interest in it or did anything to it for over a hundred years. They kind of patched it up and lived in it. So when we actually got the house, um, it was a bit horrifying. <laughs> Because there was like there was like tube and wiring, and there was newspaper in the in the walls, and the plumbing didn't work, and the heating didn't work, and it really was. It went from being a place that I sort of was like, oh my god, I have to have to. This is really bad. Like this is an old old man, and it requires a lot of attention, and it's not giving us any money. So we we kind of. But I did. I remember Marsha Watson, who ultimately um, was the decorator, the interior decorator, and friend that worked on this house with me. I remember him saying something very interesting to me at the time because I just wanted to do it, get it done. He said, why don't you spend a year living in the house and you'll figure out what you want of the house and what the house will want of you. And I always think about that and I, I say that to so many people when they move into places because we're so quick to decorate and think what we want to have and must have and this is what we're going to do and we're going to have a bowling alley and swings and blah, blah, blah and fancy kitchens and all that. And then you live in the house for the year and your real life kicks in. And what I learned about that year was obviously how we were going to live in the house, what we needed of the house, what the house needed of us. But I also realized that it, it, it went from being a renovation to almost like a restoration. So although it's very modernized and it has all the bells and whistles and air conditioning, and I realized that the house really needed to be honored and to be restored and to be acknowledged and to be studied and to be researched. Um, and, and that's why I think it took so long because it wasn't just like throw paint on the wall and hope for the best. We really, really took a lot of time combing records, speaking to people that whose grandfather and great-grandfather actually worked on the house, and they were still doing the same sort of artisan work, got them all back in here. Richard said at one point to me, I think we have the whole goddamn town working in this house. And I said, I think we do too, which was great, because now it's, it's beloved by the town, because everybody has their hand in it a bit, which I love. 
We have several piano players in the family, including me at one time, although I'm quite rusty. And of course, I love this because you could just sit here in the afternoon, early evening, and just relax and enjoy. I love this room because I think about all the memories we've had here, all the great laughter, all the pre-party drinks and the post-party dancing. We're big dancers up here at Bluestone Manor. Well, you know, I'm a big Madonna person because I know all the words. I mean, Vogue is always very good because it kind of goes along with my dorobics that I've done for years. Come on in Vogue. You know, it's very easy for me. Anyway, and of course we have the famous karaoke machine because what would a party be without a karaoke machine? I always say the great thing about karaoke machines, people see them at the beginning of the evening and they're very afraid of them. But about 10, 11 at night, we're all fighting over the microphone, which means you're having a good party, by the way. So this is beautiful, the great bar with, of course, my Blue Star Manor bourbon. This guy is, so when I originally um, was putting together the house with Marshall Watson, we divided the room up into two places. That was sort of land, and I wanted this to be more sea. So this sort of antique mirror is supposed to evoke the sea a little bit. And this is the famous Neptune coming out of the ocean to greet us. I like things that are very ethereal and sort of like the gods and the goddesses. I really love all that kind of thing. I like things that are talking pieces, and people are like, why is that there? And then before you know it, you have a full cocktail party. No details ever done. I love a good finished ceiling. You don't see it often. I think people are a little afraid about painting their ceilings. They do it a lot in Italy. They do it a lot in uh, sort of British houses. I see a lot of painted ceilings, or I've seen a lot of painted ceilings in like Charleston and stuff, but people don't realize this is wallpaper, but it changes the whole sort of feeling of the room when you add color or wallpaper, um, you know, I could just do endless things. I always have a candle on, always. I wake up in the morning and put a candle on. And as I always said, I always have fresh flowers. I mean, that's the beginning of feeling cozy and warm, right? Fresh flowers and a candle, how can you go wrong? You can have a teeny tiny apartment, right? You put in a little thing of fresh flowers and you put on a candle, you're all set. The interior of the house, that has been much talked about. You know, it's funny. I love it. And another great story about Marshall Watson, who basically spent three years with me. I felt like by the end of it, I should have married him because we spent so much time with me. And also, this is a really funny story. When I started the renovation, Richard said, you know, I started coming home with all kinds of stuff and ideas and boards and fabrics. And he was like, listen, I'm going to be super honest with you. He said, I love you to death, but I have zero interest in being involved in this project. This is yours. He said, when there are towels in the linen closet, the beds are made, there is, uh, you know, food in the refrigerator and the heat on, I will come up. Otherwise, I do not care if you paint that house pink, purple, and white. Just do not talk to me about it. I'll never question you about it, but don't bring me there until I can turn on the TV and, you know, enjoy it. So, and that's what happened. So, Marsha Watson became sort of my pseudo husband during that time. And, um... When we were first walking through the house, Marsha, who's a more of a traditional, I would say interior decorator, beautiful stuff, incredible, great finish. And the reason why I hired him is because his eye is so good architecturally. He understood spaces. And I think with the Stanford White House, you have to really understand and appreciate the light and the spaces. He, I, he said, what are you thinking about? What are you dreaming about? Like, how do you envision this? I said, well, if I had my druthers, I would say it was Frankenstein meets Marilyn Monroe with a touch of Downton Abbey. He's like, mm, I think we can do that. So <laughs> you can see I'm not afraid of color. And it's very interesting. The house sort of evolved over certain pieces. Like I bought my friend Douglas Little bought me this incredible peacock, this bejeweled peacock. And I brought it into the room we're sitting in now. And I decorated the whole entire room around this peacock. Um, and then I did the billiard room because I'd gone to Hearst Castle and I had remembered I loved these designer guild curtains that had many colors. So I did that, you know, and it sort of continued there because I wanted people to listen. It's not important for me to love my style. It's not important for me to say that you want the same house. What's important for me is that you walk into my house and you say, 
it's not offensive to what the original house history is. Um, it could have looked like this in 1902. And that you get to know a little bit more about me. It's not perfect, it's filled with color, not everything matches, but it's a home. And I want you to walk away from Bluestone Manor saying, wow, that was really an incredible experience. And I kind of know Dorinda Medley a little better. I think a really fun place to go to next is where I make it nice all the time with my cooking and stuff and where you've seen many iconic scenes to the dining room. Let's go. One of my favorite art pieces, and we have a ton of beautiful art pieces in the house, is this Marmite piece. I'll tell you why, because when Hannah was um, living in London, she was there until she was about seven, she grew an affinity like all British kids do for Marmite. Marmite is something I think unless you grew up with it, you just can never acquire the taste. I mean, I would put it on toast for her and she would be like, this is so yummy, mom, I love Marmite and non it. And I think to myself, maybe it is good. And I try it again and be like, oh my God, this stuff is awful. So when I saw this piece by this artist, I thought I have to have it. Hannah should really have it. When she gets married, I'm gonna give it to her. But this is an ode to Hannah Lynch's love of Marmite. When her teeth were coming in as a baby, she'd gnaw at it. <laughs> it looks so good, but tastes so weird. This is the dining room. And what I love about the dining room, I don't know if you noticed, but as you come down the hallway, I started with this beautiful green because I wanted to have people have the feeling of indoor to outdoor, right? So when you start, even though this is obviously an indoor, um, dining room, you start to get the feeling that you're approaching outdoors. And this is all original wood paneling. That was a mess when we bought it. It actually took six months to restore it. It was a, such a process of covering it, heating it, oiling it. And um, I was going to paint it a different color, but then I, this is the original color that it was. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to keep it the original color and just go with it and make it sort of like a little kind of green, very luxurious, fancy, no, a people sort of a green, sort of very, I don't know, Venetian. You know, this is beautiful Italian fabric evoking the outside. I love color. I'm not afraid of color. I mean, obviously I love greens. I love blues. I love any of, you know what I love? I love any of those very beautiful colors. A lot of my inspiration came from my Catholic background, going to great churches and looking at all those stained glass windows. I love those bejeweled colors, the colors that are very deep and rich and warm. As you can see, I'm not sort of a white on white on white person at all, right? <laughs> and these are the famous statues. Do you, if I had a dollar for every time someone has asked me about these statues, these are the Chinese horoscope and Richard bought them for me ages ago in London and they are perfect for here because I didn't want to put anything on the walls. I didn't want to put any nails or anything. So it looked very like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? So these have worked out perfectly because they kind of pair with the chairs. So we found an incredible blacksmith in town called John Graney and he's like a real old fashioned blacksmith. He's worked all over the world and he managed to recreate all of the ironwork in the house as it was in the early 20th century. Can you imagine that? I never have an unset table because I always think you should be ready to entertain. And I always say, always have a setting in case Jesus Christ shows up. That's something Diane Sincala would say. When I buy china, and I love buying china, um, I have a great china cupboard I can show you, I always buy 16 plates because, you know, as the night progresses, you never know who's going to knock on the door and want to join in. And I always say, more people, more the merrier. That's the motto of Blue Stone Man. We just keep pulling this out, making it bigger and bigger and bigger because <laughs> it sits 16. And I love that. So you never, there'll always be a seat for you at Blue Stone Manor. Always enough food, enough plates, and enough booze. <laughs> Come on, let's go. And what I, I really enjoy about my life right now is that I have sort of many personas, right? I have my New York City life, which is very social and out and about and, you know, fashion forward. And, and then I have my life at Bluestone Manor, um, which is, 
you know, really the essence of who I am. My family lives down the road. I grew up in the Berkshires. It really is who I am fundamentally. Um, you know, I love to entertain. I love to caretaker the house. I love to create. You know, I usually wake up and I spend um, you know, my morning sort of walking the property, stretching if it's beautiful out. I love to stretch outside. I love to be in tune with nature. Um, going into town, I still know everybody at in Great Barrington. Um, it's so funny whenever someone says, well, I'll talk to so-and-so in town and see if they're able to do it. I'm like, oh, stop it. My grandfather used to play poker with his grandfather. Don't even, you know. So I feel very connected to the town still. I go see my parents. Um, and then I'm always filled with projects up here. You know, if it's not decorating for the upcoming season, it's recording something or creating something or cooking or planning the next great dinner party or figuring out what kind of wacky new table setting I can put together because I'm very when I entertain I'm very theme based again I want people to come and sort of have you know once you come through those gates right I want you to feel like you kind of enter a new world and I always say to people when they come and visit for the weekend Friday is yours Saturday, do what you want. You can lay in bed all day. You can leave. You can lay at the pool. But Saturday nights, you better be in the blue room, dressed to the nines at 7 o'clock for cocktails. <laughs> and I always do kind of a themed dinner. I think you saw it today. So this is the famous China closet. This is a part of it, but we have China for every occasion. We have the famous peacock. We have our great formal Christmas. We have butterflies. We have Christmas. We have fish plates. We have fun plates. I mean, you have an occasion, I have a plate. And this is not even all of it. A lot of it is house downstairs. And then my crazy glassware. I love all this stuff. What is Hannah going to do with it all when I'm gone? I often think about that. Yes, we're not short of uh, fun things to set the table with, but now let's go to where it all happens. Because, you know, not only do I love to throw a dinner party, but I like to cook for the dinner party. So when you come to Bluestone Manor, pretty much I have cooked pretty much everything. Oh my gosh, everybody knows what my signature meal is. People, I'm very famous for my Bluestone Manor lasagna. It's the biggest request. I'll always say, hey, what should I make this weekend? And everyone's always like, well, make your lasagna, which is, I have to say, one of the best. Yes, I, gotta, I do have a secret about my lasagna. You have to make it with a lot of love, and you got to make it beforehand, and you have to freeze it first. So whenever you make lasagna, you've got to make the sauce ahead of time. Let that sit. Assemble the lasagna, and then freeze it. Then it really gets all marinate it together and then take it out and thaw it and then you cook it. And I'm telling you, you will never want anyone else's lasagna again once you had mine. And always have an extra pot of sauce you serve with it. And don't be cheap with the cheese. Nothing is worse than a lasagna with a little cheese. I hate that. I'm like, why bother? You did all this effort and you can't just cover it with cheese? We're about abundance in this house. So today I did a little bit of a pre-fall I guess Halloween thing, these are my favorite. These are chocolate covered skulls. Aren't they the cutest? And this, and I think you're gonna really love this. I mean, what is better than how, having my, tell you how I'm doing that well bitch glass, serving a little bit. See where we're going with this? Blue stone matter bourbon. Maybe having a great slice of my pumpkin bourbon maple glazed loaf and listening to Oh, I feel in the mood already, don't you? <laughs> Yum. Woo! Okay. She goes on forever. So let's kind of go upstairs. The name Bluestone Manor, I cannot take credit for. It happened in season, I think three or four. I'm not, don't quote me on that because they've all blended. But Carol Rosiewell was said to me, leaned over the table and said, you know, you really should name this house. 
And I said, yeah, you're probably right. She said, yeah, a house is much more interesting when it's named. I mean, God, could she have not been more right? And because the house is made with a lot of bluestone, and it's actually stone from the property, which is interesting, she said, why don't you call it Bluestone Manor? And it's stuck. And it's just, it seems like it's been its name forever. Like, I can't even look at it historically and think it was anything other than Bluestone Manor. So it fits. Thank you, Carol. <laughs> well, now, of course, we're going to go upstairs. And I know the big topic. Take your shoes off. No shoes upstairs. I don't know if you know this, but I had little Bluestone Manor rules and regulations. Very simple, but no food upstairs, no shoes upstairs. I know that's a big ask because you know why I had this carpet especially made for the stairwell. It's a stark carpet. It's a collab with Masoni. So you know what? I want to keep it nice. You know, I think when you have a country house, you know, the house is over a hundred years old, you know, as much as we keep it, I think in beautiful condition, it's also a country house and you got to be very aware of, uh, you know, the outdoors loves to come into the indoors. So we have to make sure we don't have any nibbles or bits for them. Oh my God, this is a great picture. So when I was little, my grandfather used to pick me up every morning. And I mean like six, seven on the weekends and we'd go feed the chickens. And it was one of the first lessons I learned because she, he used to let the rooster chase me because when you try to get the chicken's eggs out in the morning, the rooster gets very angry. And he used to let the rooster chase me until I learned to have enough confidence and authority to let the rooster know that I was the big shot on the barnyard on that day. And it really did teach me a lot about, you know, walking into somewhere confident. I know that sounds weird, but I had this little painting made because I just think it's so beautiful. That right here is the original owner of the house, Mr. Stanley. How great is that? So this is my grandfather feeding the chickens. So he's with me in the house. Isn't that beautiful? Where are we going? You know where we're going. We're going into the infamous fish room. Now the fish room has been redecorated, as everyone knows. And when I did choose to redecorate it after the flood, there was an outpour of sadness. So of course, we still, everyone, don't panic. We still have the fish. They're here, the shark is over here. But this is the infamous fish room with the amazing bathroom that looks like a ship. We actually had a ship maker come and do this. So it's a kind of a direct replica of a real boat. And it was my stepson's room. So we love that, don't we? I love the fish room. A housewife for me came at a perfect time because Richard had just passed, Hannah left for college, and sort of all the things that I kind of really identified with at the time were sort of like poof, gone. And, um, you know, I'd been involved with the housewives throughout the years. I knew all the girls very well. They're all friends of mine. And, um, you know, they'd always ask me, would you consider, I kind of was always in the background, would you be a friend? What would you do? Would you consider it? Ramona was always pushing me to be part of it. So when it came to me, it sort of was a perf perfect timing because I felt like it was the first time for me that I wasn't a wife or a mother or worried about other people. I just could be myself and it almost served as a therapeutic process for me. And it was a part of um, me that I didn't really really understand, you know, that because my whole life, it's always been like catering to my parents, catering to my husband's, catering to my children. Happily, it was roles I loved. But all of a sudden, I was doing something just for me. And um, I always say the first day I filmed with Ramona, I'll never forget it in the Hamptons. I remember the cameras were there and they came on. And I, I truly remember thinking, huh, I like the cameras and the cameras like me. <laughs> and it just kind of went from there. And it was, I really just let it progress the way it was. I try to be as authentic as possible. I try to just let the process happen. And I have grown tremendously. And I always say what people don't realize is the incredible platform that this Bravo Liberty gives you or the Bravo platform gives you and the incredible reach to people. So although you have to go through your highs and lows with it, and the macro effect is, is that you just are able to reach so many wonderful people. When I talked about 
what I went through with Richard and Richard passing, I cannot tell you the outpour of people that I connected with. And I just found that so powerful. The thing I love about the rooms, I really allow the children to sort of have great input because you gotta remember, I moved in here, gosh, almost, let's think about it, 20 years ago. It's hard to believe that. And each child, I said, how would you like your room? Obviously, Aiden wanted the fish room because he was an avid um, fisherman with her fa his father. Paige wanted more traditional English. And Hannah, Hannah wanted something a little bit more eclectic and fun. This is my favorite thing, the melting chandelier. I love that. And we built in this beautiful piece. This is my favorite part about this is, which, it's like it's done like an airplane. So she could at night do her homework or watch TV. How fun is that when you're a teenager? And of course it's all kitted out with electrical and all that. And I think what you're really gonna love, and I mean it, Hannah helped me the whole way doing this. She has like a George Jetson bathroom, I swear to God. Each bathroom is like very distinct to the child, but I love this bathroom. Bizazi does these tiles and they just, they let you do anything. So you go in there and it's thousands of colors of tiles and you put them together the way you like. And her favorite thing was the disco ball. Yay! What teenage girl doesn't want a disco ball in her dressing room? It's the best. I love this room. I'd like to move in here. One of the things that Hannah loves the most is, I think this is one of her favorite things I got her with Poochie skis. <laughs> I mean, talk about crazy. She always says to me, are my Poochie skis still there? I'm like, oh yeah, they're there waiting for you whenever you want. And of course, Hannah loves a good globe. So I saw this globe at Barney's and I had to get it. There's something fascinating about a globe, right? You always learn something new no matter how much you look at a globe. So now let's go into my room. Wait, how did you get into my room? Not many people are allowed in my room, but I'm happy you're here. So this is my room. Oh, I see that Len has laid out my beautiful robe. Do you recognize this from the Prohibition dinner? How early 20th century is this? Very sort of like 1920s. I love this robe. I wear this for special occasions, usually when I just have very limited company, <laughs> which isn't often. Anyway, this is my bedroom. I love it. This coverlet is one of my favorite things that Marshall and I did. It actually was a wall tapestry that I saw hanging at the D&D building. And I bought the tapestry. It was a velvet kind of tapestry. And then we built out the fabric around it. So I thought that was so clever. And I love the red on red. And the great thing about this room is, is that it just changes as the day goes on. So it looks kind of one way now, but at night, oh boy. At night, you should see how it looks if you're lucky enough. <laughs> But I want to show you something really fun. This is the secret piece here. Okay. I can put a little fire on. I can get in my cozy bed. And my favorite companion, television, <laughs> never lets me down as long as I pay the bill. So everyone... I think the last place I'm going to take you is downstairs outside. We'll look at the property and then I'm going to have to say goodbye to you because I have a lot of decorating to do for Halloween because I need to make it nice for everyone because you count on me. So let's go. Woo! Such a beautiful fall day. Blue Star Manor is at its best in the fall, I swear. And I love sitting here with the fire on. And of course, we've got this beautiful, famous now lady that Tremendous Flowers put together for me. She recreated the painting that's in the living room. So you can see it's kind of very similar. Now she's become a fixture in the house. We need to name her, folks. So tell me, DM me, what should we name her, all right? She's always waiting for me. So now let's go down and see some of the grounds.
because believe it or not, the outdoors of Bluestone Manor are as beautiful and as interesting and as used as the indoors. And we only have a couple months a year, obviously, to enjoy it. So I put in this fountain. Um, this None of any of the landscaping was here. We put the whole thing in. It was basically just empty. So we put in these beautiful trees, which at the time were like this big. And I put in this fountain because I just thought my bedroom's here. The sound of water is so peaceful. It's very good for your nervous system. And I love going to bed at night listening to it. There's something about a fountain that makes you want to do two things, just relax and jump into it, right? <laughs> and then the beautiful and much used pool. So here is my beautiful pool. I love this pool. We use it a ton and I created two purposeful seating areas. This umbrella opens up into a huge umbrella and um, we really do like entertain and eat out here the next addition to the house is going to be an outdoor kitchen which I'm working on for next spring because I just love indoor outdoor life and I was very very lucky because uh, front gate had contacted me last year and said you know what would you consider letting us design your pool can you imagine and I thought, oh, they're going to send me a couple pillows, maybe. And look what they did. They literally sent every piece of furniture that is here. We could be in Saint-Tropez. All we need is some great Claude Shell music on. And the thing I love about this is, you know, you can be spending the afternoon as the day kind of draws closer to the evening. It's so beautiful just to sit, perch here, which is my favorite place to perch late afternoon with maybe a little glass of rosé or something and just overlook. It's all about creating peaceful places. And one thing I did was very conscious of when we were designing the outdoor is I wanted transitional places. So the pool's one area. Then you go down these stairs to the maze area and every one of these steps were taken from my property, the stone. And that's another area. And then sort of the pathway, which we'll walk over to, that's another area. And then of course the front yard. So you really can do so many different things and entertain in so many different ways. As you know, we have the incredible prohibition dinner in the maze and the proper dinner over there. I was thinking the other day, I really need to go on holiday. You know, I haven't been on holiday for so long. And then I was thinking, you know, with the airlines being so crazy and expensive and place I was thinking what are you doing Dorinda you this is vacation I just need to sometimes turn off and remember to just enjoy it a little bit I think the thing that's amazing about Bluestone Manor and as my mother said one day to me when I was worrying about this and worrying about the trees she said let me tell you something this house has been here a hundred years and it will be here a hundred years after you regardless of what you do or don't do because this house as beautiful as it is and as grand as it is, it really is part of something bigger. It is sort of, I, I really fully realized it during COVID when I, for the first time, had spent this tremendous long period up at Bluestone Manor. And I remember as quarantine progressed, there were more and more animals on the property, and more and more birds and more and more things that I didn't really take in because, you know, I'd show up on Fridays, get ready for dinner parties in my, co in my company, you know, worry about sort of the very superficial part of the house and not really take in consideration that this house lives and breathes within an ecosystem that is going on regardless if I like it or not. And to watch the way nature is sort of engaged in my house. Like I would wake up in the morning and a bear would just be sitting there at my pool, literally at my pool, or there would be birds swirling around. And, and just, I just realized that a big part of Bluestone Manor isn't just the brick and mortar. It's that it actually kind of fits in what is going on in the ecosystem here. And I truly really respect, appreciate, and are aware of that. Even with a lot of the plantings I do, I'm very aware who or what, how it's gonna attract. And things I've put up that have been disaster areas, like, oh, I'll just put out a big thing of seeds on the tree, and then I see, you know, 
two bears ripping down everything. I'm like, well, that doesn't work. Because okay? <laughs> I have to be very respectful that this is their property. I am just sort of a visitor and the curator of it for a very short amount of time. Believe me, they own it much more than me. If they don't like something, they let me know it. I was sitting one morning, it was like 5.30, quarter of six, and I was sitting on the back side of the house having coffee, kind of enjoying the property, thinking, oh, it's so quiet, it's so nice. And I looked down at the apple tree where Richard's sort of tree is. It's an old, old apple tree. And there was this tremendous coyote looking at me. And he was staring at me like, what are you doing here? And I swear to God, it almost had a face. I, I was like, oh. And it didn't look like it bothered at all that I was sitting there. Like I was bothered that I was sitting there and I kind of, it was so powerful and so meaningful that I literally was like, oh, I, I'm, I'm gonna go inside now. And do you know that that coyote did not move? It stared at me and stared at me until I went into the house. And then it slowly, once I got in, I kind of looked out. It kind of got up and slowly thought, well, okay, we got, we're done with that business here. That I really felt like a little bit of an intruder in my, my own house. So I have a huge respect for, um, you know, all, all the things that are going on. I consider them my protectors in a way. We get each other. You know, I kind of leave them alone. They leave me alone. Hannah calls me Snow White. Hannah said during COVID, I became a little bit very hippie. Like I was really going for it. <laughs> I was taking herbalist class and poultices classes and, you know, dressing in all the hippie clothes. And Hannah said to me one day, she woke up and she saw me going down, doing something. And she said, there was a swirl of birds around me. She said, you have literally turned into Snow White. <laughs> like you gotta get back to the city, mom. It's now getting weird. So now let's go to the backyard. And this is sort of the beautiful backyard with all my roses and bushes and I'm outside a lot I love to be outside I love to just sit here and listen and sort of take it all in especially early evening I think early morning and early evening are two of my favorite times up here because it kind of like I give myself a moment in the morning to reflect and then I give myself a little time in the afternoon to relax. Everyone knows I love a good nap and I've taken many naps on that hammock, many, many. And just beautiful. I always say this to people, home is a place where you feel safe and you feel loved and you feel welcomed. And home is a place where you are able to just be yourself. Be your authentic self and be creative in the best way possible. And home is a place where you can really um, regenerate, you know, kind of heal yourself. When I feel like it's getting too much or whenever I feel like I'm getting overwhelmed, I literally remove myself from the city, plop myself back at Bluestone Manor and just allow myself to heal and breathe in the beautiful air and see my parents. It's not about all the stuff. Listen, I love the stuff, but this is home. And I say that to people when they're entertaining, when they're decorating, just make it always create the feeling that you are loved, you are welcome, that, you, that I'm so happy you're here. And of course, a good meal doesn't hurt, right? <laughs> well, I think I've shown you just about everything I can at Bluestone Manor. I hope you've got to know me better, Bluestone Manor better. I hope that we made it nice. I hope you're gonna come back. But now, it's time for you to go because I need to relax a bit. <laughs> Thank you for coming home, Worthy. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you come back soon. Thanks for watching. For more Homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.